What if you had a tool in your business that would help you become more profitable, that would help you make more money? Would you use it? What if I told you, you probably have this tool in your tool belt right now, and you just got to pull it out, dust it off and start using it. Hey, badass business owners. Welcome back to the show. My name is Tammy, and I'm here to help you learn your business numbers so you can make more money. Last week, we talked about three different areas that you should focus on in your business in order to grow it, especially if you've plateaued and you want to get bigger and you want to make more money and everything else. So what I thought I would do over the next couple of weeks is break those three things down a little bit further. Today, we're going to talk about your business numbers, because honestly, you need to dive into your business numbers. Your business numbers are truly what holds the key to you making more money in your business. I understand that you have busted your butt and you have gotten to where you're at today by using gut instinct and kind of using your numbers because you remember when you did well and then you kind of step back and then, you know, when it, something didn't work out, you didn't do it. I get it. But your business numbers are a whole nother level. But I also understand some of you hate math, hate numbers, and you have shied away from understanding them or even diving into them. You do not find numbers fascinating whatsoever. You hated math. But you need to understand something. When we say business numbers, I'm not asking you to do math. I'm not saying there isn't some in there, but you do math every single day. It's just not as painful. If you think about it, if you have a pizza and four friends come over, you're going to cut that pizza either into four slices or you're going to cut it into eight slices and everybody gets two, right? Well, you just did math. You figured out 25% of that pizza or one eighth of that pizza um, or 0.125 of that pizza but we don't call it that, right? In our everyday life, we're doing math all the time. We just call it something else, right? So with your business, we're going to do the exact same thing. What we're going to do is we're going to turn your business numbers into everyday reasoning that you can use to run a better, more profitable business. Now, there's a couple areas when I talk about business numbers that you want to learn. I understand that when you hear business numbers, you think that there's going to be 5, 10, 20, 50, I don't know, whatever pops into your head, ways of business numbers. That's not what we're doing. What we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on five areas in your business when it comes to your business numbers that you really want to understand. So this way you can get much better. Now, the number one tool that I talked about at the beginning is your profit and loss statement. Your profit and loss is basically telling you the story of your business for a certain amount of time typically for a month. So for example, let's say you do $1,000 in sales, it's going to tell you on the top line, your income, the sales that came in. The next thing it's going to tell you is what you spent on the cost to do those sales. The next thing it's going to tell you are the rest of the bills that you paid in your business. And then finally, it's going to tell you the profit that your business made. However, that profit has to go to three more things. It's going to be reinvested back into the business. It's going to pay taxes and hopefully it pays you the business owner. Now you've probably heard me say my calculation, my number one calculation I say everybody needs to know, and that's sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. I say this about your pricing. I say this about your profit and loss, about everything. And if you notice, it just lined up what I told you your profit and loss had in it. You really need to understand where the money's going, where it's coming in and where it's going. That's why your profit and loss is so important to you. But it also is going to give you valuable information because it's going to tell you what you did for a particular month so you can prepare not only for the next month, but the next year. If you find out that you did certain amount of sales and you had certain amount of costs in the month of July, wouldn't that be important to know next July so you can see, hey, this is what happened last year so I can make sure that I understand I got to be prepared for it. So for example, some people have insurance that gets paid every single year in the same month. Well, your profit and loss is going to see a spike in insurance on those months if it's quarterly or annually. Now, if you're looking at it, you're going to go, oh yeah, I forgot. I've got to make sure that I plan for next month that I've got to pay this insurance that I normally do. And this is really critical for those of you that seem to forget that Christmas happens every December and you have to have some money or your car tags are due during a certain month. You know, when that bill shows up and you're like, ah, I got to come up with three, $400. You know, it's the same thing by using your profit and loss. It's the tool that you have that tells you this. It also helps you not just in the monthly, it helps you prepare for the following month. It also helps you look at quarters and it helps you look at year over year. There's so many different ways to use the PNL and I'm not going to go over all of it today. I have other videos here on the channel that you can check out, but I'm always trying to show you how your PNL holds the key to so much information for you to grow your business. Matter of fact, every time that I'm coaching somebody and we're looking at how do we get 
get them unstuck and how to grow the business, we're almost always looking into the PL because it's telling us some key things. Uh, it's going to tell you, for example, on your operation expenses as well as your cost of goods, there might be money you can make today without even doing another ounce of sales. It just means you've got, you know, hey, where'd this $500 go? Oh, you know what? I don't know. Well, maybe if we figure out where that $500 is going, that goes straight to the bottom line. For every dollar you save on your profit and loss, when it comes to your cost of goods and expenses, it goes to your bottom line. So there's all kinds of really good juicy stuff in there, especially if you start breaking it out. A lot of times sales get lumped together. I'm a big fan of breaking it into categories. So for example, you might have online sales and you might have in-person sales. Great way to split those up. It might be you have commercial business versus residential. Great way to split it up. It allows you to see how much of your business is coming from those numbers. So your PL is endless on how you can use it so many different ways. And once again, you're not necessarily trying to do math. You're just looking at the PL and it's letting you know. Another thing that's in the PL that you need to add in a lot of cases is the percentages. Percentages is a huge benefit for you because if you happen to know that, hey, if 100% of my money is my sales, then what percentage goes out for cost of goods? What percentage goes out for expenses? And how much goes out for my profit? How much do I have left for the profit? And then even then breaking that down to those three areas we talked about. So for example, if I know that my expenses are running about 25%, it gives me critical information I need for purchases that I make within the business, as well as other decisions that I make. Because if I'm going to go spend $500 on something, then I need to get a return, not of $500 because that $500 I spent is of profit, right? It's money that I didn't have budgeted before. So if I spend that $500 and my expenses run 25%, that means I have to do four times as much just to break even. So if I spent $500 on some advertising thing, for example, like someone talks me into advertising with their, their paper or their magazine or whatever the case may be, and I spend $500, in order for me to break even on that advertising, I have to, and my expenses run 25%, because now my um, advertising line is going to go up $500, right? So in those expenses, my advertising goes up $500. In order for me to break even on that money I spent, if my profit is 25%, then I know that I just spent $500 of my profit. And I, in order to break even, just to get my money back, I have to do 25% divide that by 25%, which tells me I need $2,000. I know I just made that really complicated. I didn't mean to do that. This is what happens when you do live math without having the numbers pre-written out. So that was on me. But in the end, what that's helping you with is what we call ROI, return on investment. It just means that for every dollar you spend, you know how much you need to do in sales in order to be profitable. So part of you growing your business is you're going to spend money on all kinds of things. Advertising is one of those things. But let's just say that you want to buy a tool or some program or something, and it's going to cost you $250. Well, if you know that this is going to cost you $250, what you want to be able to do is use the numbers that you have to say, how much do I have to do in sales before I break even on whatever I spend? Now, 250 might mean that if our 25% is our profitability, means we have to do four times that, which means we have to do $1,000 in sales. But what if it was $2,000 to buy whatever this fancy gadget is? Well, if I spend $2,000 on whatever it is I'm buying, and I have to do four times the amount, once again, 25% of my sales, then that means that now I have to do $8,000 in sales just to break even. And for some people, that might happen in a week, that might happen in a month. And for some people I've done this for, they were not going to break even on that money they spent for four years. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend money on something that's going to take me four years to break even on unless it's going to drive tons of sales. But once again, just doing the sales that it can do, if it's going to take you four years, it might not be worth you doing it. So there's some other examples that I've used in the past, but that kind of gives you an idea. Same thing if you're going to hire somebody. A lot of times people will go, how do I know when I'm ready for an employee? Or how can I know when I'm going to afford an employee, right? Well, if you know you're going to pay that employee a certain wage, and that wage happens to work out to $500 a week, and you know that you've got $500 a week, and typically four weeks out of the month, that's $2,000. Once again, then that means you've got using the same profitability four times that 2000, you've got to do $8,000 more in sales. So will having this person aboard create $8,000 more of sales? That's what you want to ask yourself. And a lot of times, even if you bring someone in part-time, it might be $150 a week. So it's 300 
than 600, right? For four weeks, $600. Then you multiply that by four if that's your percentage. So you got what, 12, 2400. So now you've got to do $2,400 in sales. So if this person takes you out of you making phone calls and answering the phone and all that other stuff, then could you create 2400 more in sales? If you can, great. Then you know it's worth it. Once again, your numbers are the key to help you grow that business, to make the decisions that you need to make in order to grow your business. So, so far we've talked about your PNL being one of those key areas of knowing your business. We've talked about return on investment, which is money that you spend and is it the right money for you to spend and what do you have to do to be able to, to in sales to be able to break even on that. So that's a big one. We talked a little bit about employees just now because employees are another big key. For a lot of you to be able to grow your business, you're gonna have to get some help. There's only so many hours in a week. So you have to become more efficient. In a lot of cases, you can't just keep working as hard as you're working in order to do that. So the best way to figure out if you need employees is knowing your business numbers. You need to work out those numbers. Uh, A lot of times people will just keep trying to work harder and that's not going to get you where you need to go. You're going to have to bring bring employees aboard, but you need to know the numbers of them because it's more than just paying them $10 an hour. You're going to have to deal with payroll costs associated with them, workers comp associated with them, uh, uniforms if you have them, the training and everything else. So you need to figure out with the numbers what the true cost is of that employee. What do you need to create in sales? How do you need to hold them accountable to help you create those sales? Some people, if they are actually doing the job, then it allows you to take on more jobs. If they're answering the phone, it should free you up to be able to go create more jobs and to be able to do more more jobs or whatever the case may be. Uh, so employees are a fantastic thing. We'll do more videos when it talks about employees. But once again, you need to know the numbers to even decide if it's the right thing to do to bring that employee on board. Uh, especially for those of you that think you have to go buy all kinds of equipment for them. So for example, if you have a business and they need to have their own set of tools, once again, it's more than just the $12, right? You need to know financially, the numbers wise, what else you need to buy in order for them to do the job just as much. So employees, you want to know the whole picture. I'm very pro employee if it's the right thing for your business, but you need to look at the cost because if if the business isn't can't make up the money, then it's coming out of your pocket, the money you're making today. And that's what hurts a lot of business owners is they hire people without running the numbers. And then they can't figure out why they're making less money doing more in sales, but making less money. It's because they never made sure that the business could pay for the employee costs because they never worked it all through. So it's really important. Your business numbers really, once again, play a key role in the employees that you're going to bring aboard. Now, two other things that I want to talk about. The first one is cash flow. You need to understand the amount of money you have in your business. I told you the PNL is a snapshot, right? A snapshot in time. Well, for some of you, you're not making any money during some of the months out of the year. So during your busy months, you're going to actually make a lot more money. And in your slower months, you might lose money. So you need to understand the flow of money through your business and how much cash flow you have. Because if you're going to lose $1,000 in a particular month, you have to have $1,000 from somewhere else to be able to pay for that. So you need to know on average, what's your break even? point every single month and you need to understand how much cash you need to have in the bank. Actually, what puts a lot of people out of business is they don't understand their cash flow. And what ends up happening is when they have those bad months, they don't have the money in the bank. They didn't prepare for the money in the bank. So when they had all the spike and all the sales, they spent all the money instead of putting it away because they didn't understand that cash flow. And the next thing you know, they go into bad parts of the business. So when I had my ice cream shop, for example, during the summer months, we would do tons of sales, but I knew I had to save a lot of that money because in the winter, people aren't liking ice cream and they're not buying ice cream, but yet my bills didn't stop, right? My rent didn't stop. My electricity didn't stop. You know, everything else that I had, my employees, all these things that I had to pay for had to come from somewhere. So if I was losing money in those months, I had to make them up in the other months. So you need to understand that cash flow is going to help you with your business. Now, One of the areas that knowing your business numbers help you out the most with is that is pricing. And pricing is a huge factor because some of you guys are just flat out priced wrong. And I've got some videos on that. I'll I'll put a link up here for one of them, but hopefully I don't forget. But what will happen is you've got to make sure that you can take your pricing and start breaking it down. Your pricing is only going to get you so far, but a lot of people, what they're doing when they think about pricing is they're just sitting there saying, Hey, in order for me to sell this or do this, it's going to cost me a hundred, you know, a hundred bucks in, you know, labor and in the product. 
but what, and then they go, okay, well, I want to make four times that. So I'm just going to charge $400 or whatever. They're, I want to double my money. So I'm going to charge $200. People make those kind of decisions, but what they're failing to understand is you're not making double that money because you still have other money that you have to go out. Remember we talked about those expenses, right? Sales minus cost of goods, minus expenses equals your profits, but then your profits also are going to have to pay to reinvest, have to pay the taxes and, and hopefully pay you with an owner's draw. So if you don't have your pricing right and you don't run some numbers on them to see what money is left after the end of the day, then you're going to find out you're priced wrong on a lot of different things. And I can't tell you how many people when they sit down and they go through each uh, product or service that they have and start running the numbers. Now they're all not going to be the same. You're going to make more money on some things than you make on other things, but it has to be intentional. So for example, in, in Home Depot, where I used to work, we had, you know, drywall, we sold drywall basically for no money at all, but we needed people to buy the mud and the tools and everything else. That's where they made their money. So if you just sell drywall at no, making no money, then the business is going to fold. You need them to buy the rest. So it's important that you find that synergy in your products and your services to make sure that your overall mix is working correctly and is priced correctly so that you can be profitable. Um, so your pricing is a huge thing. You really need to make sure you understand and you understand what your gross margin is and understanding what your bottom line profit potential is based off of the deal. Because a lot of times, for example, someone might only be making 20 bucks and then they turn around and offer a 20% discount on something that's $100. Well, there went your $20 in profit that you were going to have. Now you're losing money. I've gotten into so many conversations with people that they want to run specials. And I'm like, you don't understand that special is going to cost you money. Well, no, I'm going to make a lot more money. No, you're going to make more sales, but you're not going to make more money. And there's a big difference between sales and profit. I talk all the time. This is a profit game, not a sales game. And yes, you need sales to have profit, but without profit, you do not have a business. Many, many companies have done thousands and millions and millions of dollars and they still go out of business because they're not profitable. You have to be profitable. And that's really where your business numbers come down to. Your business numbers are in place to help you make more profit, to be more profitable. So it's really important and critical that you understand those business numbers. If you wanna grow your business, in addition to the other two items that I talked about, in the other video, then you need to make sure that you understand these business numbers. They are critical. So if you want to learn what those other two items are and watch the video from last week, check this out over here and make sure you also come back and look because we're going to put the next video out next week. And we're going to talk about the second item that we discussed that's going to help you grow your business. With that, I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.